welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with naked truths and well-dressed lies. On David Mitchell's team tonight, from Loose Women, a singer who came third on The X Factor and went on to make an absolute fortune for Simon Cowell, it's Stacey <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> and here to grab tonight's show firmly by the consonant, vowel, consonant, consonants from Countdown, <laughs> is Susie Dent. Tonight, a man who cried when he won Strictly. I did too. I had a tenor on Ed Balls. It's Ole Aduba. <laughs> and a comedian who in 1993 starred in The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer. These days, that smell, of course, is a mixture of Werther's Originals and gin. <laughs> it's Bob Mortimer. <laughs> We begin, as always, with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with, and it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Susie, you're first up. OK. My dad once broke my leg during a particularly vigorous bout of gargalesis. Lee, I, I can guess your first question. <laughs> so, what's, what does the word dad mean? <laughs> so, what, go on, what is gargalesis? Gargalesis. gargalesis is a very heavy tickling. Uh, oh. Did you call it roughhousing? We used to call it roughhousing, as well as gargalesis, obviously. You call it um, roughhousing? Yeah. That's like where I used to live. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through the incident, man. How did it happen? Well, I don't like tickling at all. Well, the you wouldn't now, kind, would you? Or uh, the light kind, which is called knismesis. It's called what? Knismesis. Did you just say the same word backwards? <laughs> <laughs> you did that way through it. Anyway, uh, gargalesis is the really heavy, heavy kind. Are you... And... Sorry, did your family make these words up for fun, or are these actual words in the dictionary? Uh, these are actual words, yeah. Oh, OK. In the dictionary. So, there he was, so there your, he was. your dad was tickling you where? On the landing. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you, Susan? I was seven. Seven years seven old. Years. Yeah. How old was your dad at this time? Uh, my dad would have been... Oh, I don't know. Oh, you forgot you do the words, not the maths, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to phone Rachel and get back no, to <laughs> And so I, just because I absolutely hate tickling, was desperate to get away and went to move off and, in doing so, kind of left my leg behind. Which leg was it, Susie? It was my left leg and it's still ever so slightly crooked. Is it? Yeah. You were tapping your right leg before, Yes, it sure. was, that's what oh, was I was imagining. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, do legs left no, and right, it just, you know... So what do you think, Lee? Is that, is that the truth? This is what might have happened. They might have given her a card with a word on, knowing she's a wordsmith. Yeah. And then she's gone, right, I better like give a meaning word. to this word quickly. Yeah. I'll say tickling. Well, I'll tell That's you what, it. because Susie was coming on the show, we have ah. got a dictionary. Ah. Oh. So... And is this cheating? Are we allowed to do this? I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Um, <laughs> Susie, would you spell it for me? It's the wrong way up. Would you spell it for me, please? <laughs> Good job you put those glasses on. <laughs> 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 Never forget the day. There. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how do you spell it? Uh, G A. G. Right. Give me a minute. R G. G A R G. A L. G A R A L. G A R G A L. I've got G A. What? Would you? Do... Let me say. It. I've got G A R. Okay. And then... Right. Oh my God! It's like trying to get my dad to write an email. <laughs> No, there, it, it's not. It's seriously not in here. G A R. It goes from garfish to gargany, which is a small duck. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a problem here, haven't mm. we? Because we found out that the word doesn't exist. You said G A R G A L. It's a small, it's a small dictionary. It's not yeah. a small it's dictionary. It's huge. <laughs> so what's it going to be? I, I'm totally confused on this one. I'm a liner, I think. You're a liner. Yeah. Why? Well, based on the wrong leg, <laughs> this strange word, two strange words. Mm. Not you, for me. So we say lie. Well, for me, yeah. So uh, lie. For lie. Me. Lie. We're going lie. It's a lie. Susie, 
truth or lie? It is, in fact, yeah. true. Ah. There we are, it's true. Susie did once break her leg after her dad tickled her. Bob, you're up next. Ooh. For the past 15 years, I have performed my own dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, give us a big grin. It could be true. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm that you're in fine, I'm a bad dentist. No, because even very, very, very good dentists sometimes get someone else to do their teeth. <laughs> uh, right. I, and by sometimes, I of course mean <laughs> always. <laughs> How do you do that? Like, do you. What do you do? Yeah. Well, no, the, the key to it is I, I, don't, I don't do. Extractions. I haven't had to. I haven't. Fillings. I do fillings. Caps? I do fillings. Crown replacements. <laughs> I, re I repair bridges. <laughs> I... <laughs> Specifically, I don't do so. Don't ask, Stacey. I don't do implants. Oh. I don't do root canal. Do you canal. drill? I do have a drill. I use. You yeah. have to, to to do a filling. You've got to drill it out first. Don't exactly. You? Yeah. Do you yeah. use local anaesthetic? Yeah. No. No need. No <gasps> need. No need. Why? Because it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> the situation in my mouth is I have one very long piece of teeth, that white bit there. That's yeah. all one piece, <laughs> yeah? What? It's, it's <laughs> one, one, one tooth. <laughs> <laughs> one piece. What you, but one made to look like many teeth. <laughs> oh, it is. So it, that's it's false. false teeth. <laughs> yes. OK. Either end of this, uh, I have two what you call crowns, yeah? Mm. Right at the end. At the bottom, I have my own teeth here. As my dentist says, my bottom ones are popper don colour, yeah? And my top ones are peel or rice. <laughs> <laughs> so who said that? My dentist. So this was some time ago? No, no, no. I pro David, 15 years. I do... I perform my own dentistry. Yes. There's no exclusivity there. You still have a, a dentist, yes. but you just don't... You don't let him do all the stuff. Yes. Why is your mouth in such a state? <laughs> <laughs> because I used to. I used to have 17 sugars in a cup of oh. coffee or tea. 17? 17. 17, yes. 17 That's in a mug? Yes. If I had 18, it's too sweet for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the crowns would come off. I'd go to the dentist, yeah? He charged me three, 400 quid, yeah? To put them back in. And it's, it's outrageous. And I heard... This magic word. I heard him say to his dental nurse, Fuji 9. <laughs> yeah? Fuji 9. And I became aware that this Fuji 9, it's actually a looting cement, uh. which means you can use it. Are you sure he wasn't halfway through a Japanese football resort? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually use it. It mixed one to one, the liquid and the powder. It's a cement, yeah? Mix two part liquid, <laughs> yeah. yeah? Then it becomes more malleable for fillings. I found a way via my TV work to get hold of some Fuji 9. <laughs> Once you have Fuji 9, Why could you, you use... are a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what equipment do you have, then? All I have is my Fuji 9 with its, <laughs> with its little orange spoon, with a bigger end and a littler end. So there's different amounts, depending on whether you want the 50-50 like... or the 2 to 1. Like That's a... Fuji 9. Yeah. It's all done for you. It's done for you. It's magic. Uh, it's magic. And then, but it's magic. magic. It's like you're, the cement is softer than your teeth. Yeah. So I have a um, a leather maker's drill. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for... <laughs> a leather maker's drill. A lot. Yes, yeah, so a leather yeah. maker's drill because that has um, sanding fitments to yeah. grind it down. You got to check your bite after you fit. After you fix the crown, if you get it a bit wonky, your bite won't be right. So you have to. File the Fuji down. Oh, that bike's nice now. That's <laughs> nice. Okay, but but the other yes, thing you've got to check after your own doing your own dentistry is your mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not need one of those special lights? Kitchen Island. I've got a Kitchen Island. It's, <laughs> nice, to, it's nice to have a Kitchen Island, isn't it? Yeah. And it has a big. It's the only place with a big light over it. <laughs> so I got my son has a PlayStation seat that's very low back like that. <laughs> so I put, a seat. Yeah, it's a gamer's seat, and yeah. I put that on the kitchen. 
island. On, on the kitchen island. You put it on yeah. the island. Yeah. So you're up high <laughs> on the island. Yes, because well, then that can, puts the lamp about there. And so, so you're, the, <laughs> you're in a PlayStation gamer seat. Yes. Balancing on... What's the surface of the kitchen island? Uh, do you know, I think it's Corian. It's very nice. <laughs> Corian was originally what was used for autopsy surfaces. Again, so... Are you well, doing well, your own autopsies at home as well? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, the dog's dead. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> so, if I was to say this, the hardest thing is is somewhere to hold the mirror. Yeah? I think the hardest thing is but to sell I... the story, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I have the most curved Indian instrument called the Samashi or something. And if I put it next to me on my game, you think the curve of it, it's a, like a flute thing. It's the curve of it meeting. goes there, and I can put my mirror there like that. Got the light there. Game thing. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Sorry, you, you hang the mirror on the, on the end of a curvaceous Indian, Indian instrument. musical instrument. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this is very specific. Mm. So what's it going to be? There's a, I mean, there's a lot of detail. Yeah. <laughs> if he was trying to make this story plausible, why would he say the way I set up the mirror is that I tie it to the end so, of an Indian do you musical rem instrument. Do you remember yeah. Bob being on this show before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and it's always true. <laughs> it's true about the, the masks in Castle Douglas. It was true about him being able to tear an apple apart with his bare hands. <laughs> it was true about the game in the gardens. Well, look, whether or not it's true, and, and we don't know yet, uh, <laughs> don't try it at home. I, 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 I should say. Do you ever do extractions, Bob? I've never done an extraction. Because I genuinely had an extraction yesterday, look. You see it out there? Oh, they've not used Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, what's it going to be? I think it's true. You think it's what? I think it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is true. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, John. <laughs> so, uh, Susie, what is John to you? This is John. He came to my rescue when I once got stuck in a tree. Uh, Stacey, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know John. This is John, and he once booked me to sing happy birthday to his tortoise. <laughs> and finally, David, what is your relationship with John? This is John. He's the locksmith who came to rescue my locksmith after that locksmith got locked out of his van. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, where do you want to start? Susie, what were you doing up the tree? Well, I presume I'm... escaping your dad's tickles. <laughs> <laughs> I was rowing. Rowing in a tree? No. <laughs> in a boat on my own for one of the very first times, because I'd always been out uh, with John, who was my rowing coach. And when you're rowing, of course, you have to go steer backwards. And I steered straight into a tree, and it was a tree that was overhanging the river. And I got my rowing jersey. I call it a life jacket. No, well, it didn't have a life jacket. It was just a rowing jersey. A rowing jersey? Yeah. Did you have any sort of lifesaver on? No. Oh, oh dear, 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 dear. dear. No. <laughs> but I can swim. Well, I'll tell you what, if he really is your coach, then once this is over, I'll be having a pretty stern word with him. <laughs> what, so a little, little bit of branch? Snagged your top. Yeah, but then um, it just dragged me into this labyrinth of branches. Oh, labyrinth. Now, you're, now you're lost in the branches. Mm. <laughs> so what happened? John saw me, and then John is a very tough coach. Quite uh, quiet, it's isn't tough it? love, and <laughs> he's quite quiet. This is quite this. He was shouting instructions as to how to get myself out, but I was in such a dither. Really? And so he walked a little bit down the bank towards me, continued to shout, and yeah. somehow... I, I think I took my jersey off, actually. And it's then I came back story, with then, one oar. With so, one oar. Which one? Well, I suppose either oar. 
Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh... That's one for the, That's one for the countdown crowd. <laughs> Susie, how fast are you going down this river? Because Really, not very fast at all. So, but I just fast. didn't steer properly, and I still have a little scar under my eye. Where so you I... cut yourself there, under the eye? Yeah. Wow. Did you have to go and get any surgery? Did you go around to Bob's for his... <laughs> Bob Mortimer's <laughs> no, eye surgery? <laughs> no, that would be Fuji <laughs> 6. <laughs> <laughs> it's for grafting. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Lee, who would you like to question next? OK. Stacey. Yes. Remind us again, sorry. John booked me to sing Happy Birthday for his tortoise. Right. And was it the tortoise's birthday? Yes. Why would I be singing Happy Birthday <laughs> for the tortoise if it wasn't his birthday? <laughs> my dad randomly met John, and my dad, being the crazy man of the years, he makes immediate friendships with people, and John had mentioned that his tortoise, Derek, <laughs> was turning 60, and that he was Six a big How old is he? 60. 60. I know. Well, I thought tortoises lived till, like, 100, so I didn't think it was a big deal for it to be 60. <laughs> <laughs> He said that the tortoise was a big fan of mine and that he really wanted me to... <laughs> to you. And my dad was like, you've got to start giving back to the community and doing nice things. <laughs> so... Were you booked professionally? Were you paid? I was paid. You were? <laughs> That's it's your not, dad's not really version good. of giving back to the community. <laughs> Is this before X Factor or it after? Like, it was only about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> what was the party like? What was it? You arrived at the house, what happened? We, I arrived <laughs> there about half past three and, um, and Derek was potting around in the garden, happy as can be. And, uh, and yeah, there must have been about ten other people. Um, he's Who not a popular tortoise. They were John's friends. <laughs> but... John's got friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was the worst look I've ever been given on this show. <laughs> and did you I'm, sing? Can... Did you sing unaccompanied, or was there some musical backing? There was a conversation about doing it like Marilyn Monroe style, but I didn't feel comfortable <laughs> doing it like that. Would you sing it now for us? If you did want to sing it, <laughs> oh good, you brought the tortoise's head. <laughs> Would you like to? You could imagine Wait. David is the tortoise, if you like. OK. He could just sit there and look at you. <laughs> Derek? I'm the tortoise. Yes, you okay. can um... <laughs> But he was, he was a bit happier. It was his birthday. <laughs> it's me. Did you just say, it's me? It's me. <laughs> do, do you think yeah. he recognised you, the tortoise? <laughs> it's my biggest fan. It's me fan. from X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Derek. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Come on, Derek. <laughs> It was a lot like that. So, have you forgot the words? No! <laughs> I, just, I feel like this substitute for Derek is really not appreciating what I'm doing, and I don't... I, don't know <laughs> I take acting very seriously. <laughs> and I'm immersing myself in the role of a 60-year-old tortoise. <laughs> and I believe this is how the tortoise will have behaved. But I'm I'm You're there. telling me the tortoise was jumping up and wagging its tail. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think we've left I fans of credibility. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about David? Remind us of your statement. Yes, this is John. He's the locksmith that, uh, that came to help my locksmith when my locksmith, that locksmith, had locked himself out of his van. OK, so first of all, why did you employ a locksmith? Because I couldn't get into my house. Right. Um, because? <laughs> and it was an, is an issue with the lock. <laughs> <laughs> What was the issue with the lock? My key had broken uh, in... In oh, the lock. Oh. In the lock. You were locked... You were now locked out. Yeah. So, first of all, mm. what do you do next? I, uh, I rang my wife. Right. Mm. So, you had your mobile, you phoned your wife, and mm. you said... Are you still doing the locksmith stuff, love? <laughs> <laughs> I said... I, I, I'm on a job, Dave, I'm on a job. I'll be around as soon as I can. <laughs> I'll be out Friday, maybe Saturday, but I can't promise. Uh, I, I said... Uh, <laughs> The key has snapped off in the lock. I believe, darling, 
that you have the number of a locksmith in the area, don't you? So you call your wife, she, yeah. she gives you the number, you phone mm. a locksmith. So who was this first locksmith? What was his name? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew the locksmith. Your classic yeah. locksmith name, yeah. Yeah. Andrew turned up, assessed the situation right. and thought, said it'd be no problem, we should, we'll just need to, you know, drill out the lock and replace yeah. it. Yeah. And then went back to his van and, lo and behold... <laughs> what? He'd left the key in it <laughs> and he couldn't get in. Wow. <laughs> now, I'm taking it he's got your wife's number as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, so when Andrew came, how did he know that that little bit of key had broken off in the lock? Did you tell him? Well, yes. Yeah, did he I do thought it? I'd give him a clue. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, I tell you what, I'll let you work this out for yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to show the broken off end of key. You try and get in. How did he, how did he examine now that? Now you try and get in your own van. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing to make Andrew seem like a failure. <laughs> what are you? You can gain admittance nowhere. <laughs> well, who did you phone next? What happens next? I didn't phone. Did Andrew phone. You almost looked at him then, didn't you? I did look at him. But he didn't phone him. No, he, he's didn't. the phoney, yeah. not the phoner. I mean, he's literally the phoney. Yeah. If you're saying you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> another one for the countdown audience. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, Andrew, n not John, yeah. called his own company. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which and I thought was a good sign. So John now turns up mm -hmm. in the identical looking van because it's a company van, I assume. Mm hmm. He said, mm hmm, like I was trying to trick you there. Were you not? No, I was just you, should, you should try that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so he turns up in, in a completely different van, right? Yes, we couldn't turn up in the same van. <laughs> he turns up in a different van. In fact, no, what happened was Andrew ran, John answered and said, Well, oh, funnily enough, I'm asleep in the van. <laughs> and I can open it from the inside. <laughs> so he, he turns up. Yeah. And how does he get him out of the van? Talk uh, us through the process. I, I, know he's a, I know he's a locksmith, but roughly what did he do? I don't know. Even did he do roughly. What? No, I just stayed sitting on the bench by my front door. You got a looking bench by your front door. Bench. Bench. bench by your front door. Is that where you make people wait? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have benches by the front door. Oh, I've wasted this brilliant nugget. Just mentioning him passing. This should have been on a card. I have a bench by my front door. <laughs> wow! A bench a by bench your front door. door. A front door and a bench door. in the same universe next to each other. <laughs> oh, I've never <laughs> seen a bench by your front door. What, what I try... got, this is annoying me, cos I've been to your house and there was definitely not a bench. Are you getting this bench out just for special people? The amount of times I've knocked on your door and you've gone, sit on the floor and wait! <laughs> You have been to my house and there was a bench by the front door. Uh, you just didn't notice well, it. Well, I'll tell you, after I went, I left and there isn't one now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that a team of people, one of whom does his own dentistry <laughs> on the top of a kitchen island with a mirror attached to an Indian wind instrument, can't believe that someone would have a bench All next right. door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we need an answer. <laughs> so, Lee's team, is John Susie's helpful hero, Stacey's party planner, or David's lock legend? What are you thinking? Bob, who do you think well, it is? Well, I'm thinking, is that man a tortoise owner? <laughs> <laughs> and I've said to myself, is he a locksmith? And I don't see it. That man's been in cold rivers. Look at him. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to go with Susie, aren't we? Because I can't, I can't see it being the other two. So it has to be Susie. Gonna say Susie? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep, yeah, for me. Yeah. John, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm John, and I rescued Susie when she got caught in a tree. Uh... <laughs> yes, John is Susie's helpful hero. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. <laughs> en route to a meeting at the BBC, I gave CPR to an OAP. How old? C. Pardon? How old? I'm 48. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she need mouth to mouth? Well, it turns out she didn't, and, uh... <laughs> You know, how do I know how you fix a sprained ankle? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and 
And how did you encounter the OAP? The OAP was just outside the tube station where the BBC uh, was, and soon will be again, I believe. Which line? What? Which line did you get on? I got the train to Waterloo and then I got the tube. Which colour? Well, she started off sort of pink, <laughs> then she went red. <laughs> So, what colour tube? Funny enough, I did, when I got back that day and my wife said, what's happened today? I think, well, what, what a journey. <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? I believe that you've been on the London Underground. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> well, should we leave it at that? <laughs> um, not quite. Describe the scene. I saw uh, people in a circle looking down on the floor. Right. Someone said, is, is anyone a doctor? And I said, yeah. Yeah, there's loads of people. <laughs> She goes, I don't suppose you can do CPR, can you? And I went, uh, I went, can I do CPR? And I, as it happens, I can do CPR. So what does CPR involve? Yeah. Put my hand there, put my hand there, and I started doing this. Yeah. This. What's your rhythm? I did this. That's too slow. Uh, yeah, that's right? it's, it's meant to be oh, staying alive. Oh, sorry, I thought you wanted it in slow motion. It's the music of <laughs> staying alive. You wanted it in the pink beats, Ha, ha, ha. Ah, yeah, but my record player's broke. <laughs> <laughs> So what happened? We well, got a new record player. <laughs> <laughs> How many of these did you do? I think I did. Uh, 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 Stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> that was a problem. I paused for the high pitched mode as she went blue again. Stay alive. Stay alive. This didn't help. <laughs> We got through the first first verse. OK, see, so you, <laughs> you did the first verse of Staying Alive, then, then what happened? And then she literally got up at the right moment of the verse. She went, Staying Alive! <laughs> <laughs> and then the ambulance came and took her off and, um, and she, uh, she went straight over a bridge and died. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what, what are you thinking? Stacey, does that have the ring of truth for awful, you? Awful end to the story, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm very suspicious that he doesn't even know what tube he got on. You really, really, that's, the, that's the most doubtful part of the story. What, what do you, you think, think, Susie? Yes. No, I think his rhythm was all wrong. Whoa. You've been told that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, I don't believe it. Don't believe it. No. Then I think we think it's a lie. You think he was making all of I that do. up? Goodness I'm afraid. <laughs> Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie! Yeah. Miss. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, I can reveal that. David's team have won by three points to one. Yay! Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. Miriam, if you like dancing and partying through the night, Havana is the place to be. The real Marigold on tour next, while BBC Two follows a former rugby player who became a double amputee in his search for work. It's Employable Me.